my name is Christian Andreas. Uh, I'm 25 years old and I'm here uh, with my company, Kenda. And we're presenting the new learning game that we're developing called Runerod. And uh, my background for this is actually a civil engineering degree. So uh, I'm one of the few people here who's not really educated within game design. Basically, the idea that we're focusing on is that learning games so far has been focusing on doing one thing very, very good. So either focusing on, as an example, the plague, try and give an uh, introduction to this and give a better understanding of what's happened here. But what we believe in is that games as a platform can be extended beyond this. So it can be a platform for learning, a tool that is integrated into uh, the education system. When you're developing a learning game, then you actually have multiple end users. You don't just have the kids who are going to be playing this and hopefully will think it's fun. There's also the teachers, there's the school administration board, and there's also the government in that they have something that they say in our country, this is what we call learning and this is what we believe that kids should be learning. And all of these people need to be satisfied. They need to see the value in a learning game for it to be a success. So what we're doing now is we have the game, it has been proven in a small setting that it's working, it's interesting for the kids, and they are actually learning something. So right now we're going about testing this, so we can take the experiences from this school up to a higher level, so we can convince the basic administration boards in Denmark that this is something that should be implemented across the country, in every school. The idea is, you know, we're using these elements from World of Warcraft. Quite simple quest structure, you know, you have to go out, uh, pick up these uh, pieces, and then you have to uh, gather them together later on. So it's, we're trying to use these elements that they already know from online games and from the games they're playing. Like now we can see he wants to talk to us again, so we go back. Turn it in, it has a dialogue saying, okay, I'd like to help you. And here we go over, and this is actually one of the learning quests. So you have a lot of these puzzle quests in normal games, and the kids know how to uh, interact with them and how to solve them. But there's actually also something in the school system called the Tanka. And the only difference we have to make was that you have these elements that need to be a specific size and they have to end up making a specific figure in the end. And that is actually the only thing you need to change for it to become a learning game. So while doing this puzzle quest, they are actually also learning something that uh, the Danish school system tells them that they need to learn. So they are learning things they would otherwise have learned in school by normal uh, presentation methods, but they're learning it in the game. We, of course, we expected that they would be learning something, but we did not expect to this degree that we've seen. We've actually discovered that these kids are learning much, much faster than we anticipated, and it seems that if Games are very, very good at motivating people and give them a feeling that they are in a different world and they can do sort of thing. You see games where you have superpowers, where there are orcs and elves and you can fly around in a spaceship. So when they're in these games, when they're in this game world, then it's actually not that far removed for these kids that they, of course, in this world can also do math. They can also read here, even if they're not expected to do this in a school setting. So we actually see that they're much more willing to experiment and they're much, uh, much more able to actually learn something from their experiences when they're in this game context. So you have the, the basic interaction with the people, is reading, so that is the, the language skills that are primarily being uh, taught there. And we see that even though there's no sound, these kids are actually just starting to read it. So they are in this game learning to read more and they will end up reading more than they do in almost a month of normal school time, just in an hour. So you have that as the language part, but also a quest like this, where you have to, you have this field and you need to figure out how much wood he needs to rebuild this field. So you can go around and you can interact with these four pillars here 
and then you can start measuring the information and gain the information that you need to solve this question. So now we have measured this one, the length of the field, and now we need to measure uh, the width of the field. So this is again taking some very basic arithmetics and presenting it in a situa situation that they can relate to and that they can understand better. So here we're starting to get some information like the height of the pole and now we just need to figure out what is the distance between the poles. So we need to have activated two of these to figure out what the distance is. So now we have all the information that we need. We have the length of the field, the width, the height of the poles and the distance between them. So now we can go back and this is where they have to start calculating or they have to figure this out themselves. So they need to find out, so the distance between poles are 5 meters, the length is 25 and the width is 35. That means they probably need around 24 poles. Get feedback, okay that is correct. And how much wood they need? Well, then they just need to times that with the height of the poles, 1.5. So that is 36. So they they find this information in the game world and then they have to draw a conclusion based on the information that they find and that is where they uh, it is much easier for them to understand the math problems when it is formulated by this because they don't just get a text introduction this is the numbers that you need to use they have actually engaged in the game and by exploring the game they have figured out this information which means they can relate to it much more easily the vision here and what I believe is actually possible is that you have computer games as a general tool for learning. So you have in just about every game you actually have elements of collaboration, you have elements of natural science, you have languages in that you need to speak uh, a language in some cases, you need to read and to understand what is said in the game and you also have some basic understanding of actually very complex math in that what we are trying to teach kids in gymnasium and in university to some degree is not just to calculate and do arithmetic, but actually also look at a context, see which are the important uh, numbers here and draw a conclusion based on how they relate to each other. So what we believe that games can be is actually a complete subject of their own in school. So you have a subject called computer games where you play three hours a week and then the other subjects are relating to what they learned, what they have been playing in the computer game. So instead of saying now we need to study English, this is this and this language, then we can actually relate this to something that motivates them. We can relate it to the game so that they are prepared and better suited to playing the game and they become better at it. I think it's very important to to relate to these teachers and uh, the people who are going to implement the games in a very unprejudiced way. You need to, I, I'm starting to see this feel within, uh, or this attitude within the learning game industry that there's something wrong with the education system, we have all the answers and we should bring about a revolution bringing games in. I don't think that is necessarily the answer. I think it's very important to relate to the teachers use their experiences and bring them in as a co-developer on your titles because if you just go out and say there's something wrong with the whole way we're teaching today then you will just alienate people. You need to bring them in and give them some sort of uh, feedback and some agency in creating these games then I think you will be much more successful. What we're doing now is we are trying to get the statistical evidence of a game actually assisting in learning. And once we hopefully have this, if this is a success, then try to implement this as a standard teaching tool in the school system. So that is the next step. <laughs> it's a user group, they need to be included. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Oh, 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 oh,